Another fairly common foodborne infection in the United States is salmonella. Salmonella can cause a variety of different ailments. The first of which we'll talk about is salmonellosis. Salmonellosis is a type of illness acquired from salmonella species of bacteria like these type pictured here. You may already know that salmonella is acquired through meats such as chicken, eggs, seafood, and unpasteurized fruit juice. Fresh produce has also increasingly become a source of salmonellosis. This includes things like lettuce, raspberries, tomatoes, cantaloupe, pre-cut watermelon, and alfalfa sprouts. One of the more deadly incidences of salmonellosis in recent times was from cut up fresh cantaloupe. In addition to being found on various food items, salmonella can also be acquired from reptiles, including those kept as pets. Salmonella can be acquired from iguanas and a variety of lizards, snakes, turtles, and even guinea pigs, which of course are not reptiles but can still carry salmonella. This is especially important in families with children who like to handle these types of pets. Because children do not have high immune systems, they can be especially impacted by salmonellosis. This connection between salmonella found in reptiles and salmonella found in chickens, eggs, and other birds is interesting because these organisms do have common ancestry. So a bacterium that grows very well and asymptomatically in birds would not surprisingly also grow really well and asymptomatically in reptiles as well. Once they get into mammal hosts, on the other hand, they can quickly lead to disease. Another type of salmonella that does not cause salmonellosis is Salmonella typhi. As you can hear from the species name, Salmonella typhi causes typhoid fever. This organism survives in water plants, sewage, and some foods, but generally is transmitted via the oral fecal route. An individual uses the bathroom, doesn't wash their hands, and prepares food for someone else. This salmonella can also be transmitted by flies and on the surface of objects. Typhoid used to be far more common worldwide than it is today. The reason for this is water treatment and sewage treatment plants prevent a lot of oral fecal transmission. In the early 1900s, Typhoid fever was a major killer, with over 20,000 cases occurring annually in the United States. Nowadays, most cases of typhoid fever in the U.S. arrive via travelers who have acquired the disease elsewhere. Remember that typhoid fever was the disease transmitted by typhoid Mary that we talked about earlier in this class. That's because about 5% of people infected with salmonella typhi are not sick and can exist as chronic carriers throughout their life. Another foodborne infection is shigellosis. Shigellosis is transmitted by a microbe known as shigella. There are many different species of shigella and these microbes are generally transmitted via eggs, shellfish, dairy products, and sometimes vegetables and water. Transmission of Shigella is also via the oral fecal route, much like Salmonella typhi. Again, a lot of times this is transmitted by somebody not washing their hands, 
after using the bathroom. The infective dose of shigellosis is very low, so it doesn't take many microbes to transmit this disease. Dehydration is a major concern for individuals with shigellosis because they lose a lot of water as a result of vomiting and diarrhea. Shigellosis is a, of particular interest and concern for daycare centers because their very young populations have weakened immune systems and are also not one to necessarily wash their hands after touching infected objects. Little children are always putting things into their mouths. This is why it's important for daycare centers to be diligent with hand washing, not just of the children, but particularly of the daycare workers, as well as of many of the toys used in the daycare facilities. More than foodborne infections, we also have waterborne infections. The most important of these, and well known, is cholera. Cholera is caused by a microbe known as Vibrio cholerae. It's a comma shaped microbe that can infect the intestinal tract and is transmitted by infected water. The infectious dose of cholera is really high, so individuals need to ingest a lot of this microbe in order to become sick. However, once ill from cholera, people tend to die from dehydration within a few hours to a few days. That's because cholera toxin causes copious amounts of diarrhea, leading to dehydration very rapidly and death. In untreated cases, cholera can lead to 70% mortality rate, with most people acquiring cholera dying from this disease. Thankfully, rehydration treatments can be extremely helpful, and in developing countries, rehydration treatments have saved many lives. Cholera still pops up around the world today, especially in areas destroyed by natural disasters such as tsunamis and earthquakes. We saw this in 2010 in Haiti after their earthquake destroyed a lot of their water treatment plants. Other Vibrio species can also live in other waterways around the world and can cause foodborne illnesses, including that associated with seafood, as well as wound infections and sepsis, especially as they relate to, again, natural disasters where people are wading through water contaminated by these Vibrio species. Another type of foodborne illness is E. coli. E. coli is a mutualistic microbe that lives in nearly every human's large intestine and helps us digest our food and also provides us with necessary vitamins. However, some E. coli can acquire plasmids from other microbes such as Shigella or cholera and can cause deadly infections as a result. One of the more notable E. coli pathogens includes E. coli 0157H7. This microbe acquired a set of genes on a plasmid from Shigella. These genes are responsible for forming a molecule known as shigatoxin which is an enterotoxin that produces a lot of damage to the large intestine. E. coli 0157H7 became famous for infecting a lot of people and even killing a few from infected beef. In particular, beef that was not heated to temperatures high enough to kill this microbe. 
However, despite the fact that this microbe lives naturally in many bovine intestines, it can also infect vegetables and sprouts. The reason for this is if the vegetables or sprouts are watered with contaminated water that contains feces from these cattle, then the vegetables and sprouts can also contain this microbe and get people sick. In particular, since lettuce and sprouts are typically not cooked, these microbes can survive on these food items and are more likely to get people sick as a result. There are other strains of E. coli that are pathogenic as well. In addition to the E. coli 0157H7, there is a different type of pathogenic E. coli known as traveler's diarrhea that can get people sick around the world. Traveler's diarrhea is also usually acquired by contaminated food or water. Now, while you may have heard of Shigella, Salmonella, and E. coli, you may not have heard of Campylobacter. Campylobacter is the major cause of bacterial diarrhea in the United States today, and in fact leads to more diarrhea and food poisoning illnesses than Salmonella and Shigella combined. This microbe, particularly Campylobacter jejunii, infects and contaminates poultry, cattle, drinking water, and unpasteurized milk. The infectious dose is so small that it can easily cause disease in even small amounts of infected substances. Given its prevalence in chicken and dairy, Campylobacter is one of the main reasons why the FDA and USDA and CDC all recommend cooking chicken thoroughly and only consuming pasteurized milk and cheeses. Another microbe known for infections from dairy products, including cheeses, is listeria. Listeria can cause listeriosis. In this microbe, in particular, Listeria monocytogenes can infect many different sources of agriculture and farming. It can be found in deli meats, hot dogs, soft cheeses, milk, ice cream, and even fruits and other food items. Listeria generally does not cause disease in healthy individuals, but is much more common to be causes of disease in children and particularly pregnant women who are 20 times more susceptible than non-pregnant women to this microbe. Once a pregnant woman is infected with listeria, she can become severely ill and even die. This microbe doesn't just affect the woman, but can also affect the developing embryo or fetus, leading to miscarriages and stillbirths or birth defects. The reason why this microbe is so commonly found on deli meats and soft cheeses is that it grows really well at colder temperatures, unlike most other microbes. So in the refrigerator, if it is found on these different food items, it can easily grow to deadly numbers. Listeria is becoming more and more commonly found on other fruits and vegetables, however, as was evident in a 2011 outbreak on cantaloupe that led to 30 deaths in the United States. Frozen vegetables can also harbor this deadly pathogen.